let's talk about acute respiratory distress syndrome. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, also known as ARDS, is uh, a pretty severe respiratory issue and it is uh, specifically a non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema related to systemic inflammatory response. So let's break that down. Pulmonary edema. What pulmonary edema is, is there is fluid inside the lungs. Okay, edema, sw uh, fluid, swelling, pulmonary in the lungs. That's different than pulmonary effusions in that, in an eff so in edema you got fluid in the lungs, in effusions you got fluid outside the lungs. So this is swelling of fluid inside the lungs, non-cardiogenic, so not related to the heart. It's not due to heart failure, it's not due to decreased cardiac output, it is due to something else, something respiratory, okay? And it's related to a systemic inflammatory response, and this could be, uh, when I say systemic, either the whole body, such as uh, shock, uh, the, or sepsis, or something due to the lungs themselves. So let's talk about the causes. Okay, what causes the lungs to have pulmonary edema that's not related to the heart? Pulmonary embolism. So you got a blood clot inside of uh, the main arteries uh, to the lungs, and so fluid backs up into the lungs, pulmonary edema, uh, due to inhalation of hot smoke or toxic gases. You inhale it, it damages the inside of the lungs, and now they become, they're, they're inflamed, uh, just as if you, you were to have a burn on your arm, they're burned on the inside, they're inflamed, they're leaking fluids, pulmonary edema. Uh, pneumonia, uh, same thing, you got damage to the insides of the lungs. Aspiration, uh, you, you inhaled uh, some food and now you got bacteria in there and it's caused some damage to the inside of the lungs. A near drowning incident, your lungs are full of say chlorine water or nasty water and now you have bacteria or some, some chemicals in there. And, or just the damage from trying to breathe thick water, water's thicker than air, it can cause a near, uh, it can cause pul pulmonary edema. Signs and symptoms. So uh, a, a big sign you'll see here is your patient's oxygen saturations are going to be very low and you'll put nasal cannula on them, doesn't do anything. you put a mask on them, it doesn't do anything. Because the problem isn't getting oxygen to them, it's that their lungs aren't working. They're not exchanging that oxygen. So you'll put all the O2 you want on them, but it's, they're going to stay low oxygen levels. They're going to have shortness of breath and dyspnea. Uh, they're not getting oxygen levels, so they're going to be cyanotic. Uh, at this point, it's severe enough. It's not getting to the brain. They're going to have confusion. The heart's going to try to compensate by increasing its heart rate, but there's not really doing any good, and you're going to see the blood pressure start to drop, and your lungs are going to sound like crap. You can hear wheezing. You can hear rails. You're, when you do your labs, you're going to see low oxygen levels, and because they're not getting oxygen in, well, if you can't get oxygen in, you can't get carbon dioxide out. So you have high carbon dioxide, that's uh, hypercapnia, and you're going to have acidosis. It's going to be respiratory acidosis because you can't get the carbon dioxide out. And so that is uh, going to cause respiratory acidosis. Diagnosis, you can do a chest x-ray, and this is going to show the pulmonary edema. And, but you're going to also run an EKG, or, and, and from a chest x-ray and EKG, you're going to see it's not related to the heart. Treatment. Uh, basically, it's, you, you, can't, uh, do, you can't suck the fluid out of the inside of the lung, so this is going to be a long-term treatment. You're, the patient's going to need intubated, and they're going to need to be on a ventilator. And they're going to probably be in ICU for quite a while if they survive before they make it out. Um, so really, you've got to let the lungs heal on their own. Um, just some quick tips about ventilator support. You're going to be monitoring them. You're going to be listening to the lung sounds. Make sure they don't have a pneumothorax, which is where you don't hear any air from that lung. You're going to want to uh, monitor their vital signs regularly, monitor their EKG, monitor their heart. Um, you're going to want to suction them as needed, uh, suction, uh, do oral care. You want to prevent infection so they don't get pneumonia on top of whatever else they have going on. Um, you can do this by uh, making sure um, they're getting antibiotics if it's due to sepsis, and you want to give them antibiotics, and you want to also treat the cause. If they do, if they ha if they're in because they have pneumonia or sepsis, they're also going to need antibiotics as part of their treatment. And so, acute respiratory distress syndrome. This is going to be an ICU uh, diagnosis, and they're going to be needing more than likely intubation and a ventilator.